Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish back again this week with some more Titan Quest. So, in case you missed the last stream, which, whew, man, if you were here for the last stream, <laughs> that was a bit of a rough one. Hmm, not just because of the technical difficulties, but also because we fought another Telkeen. Thankfully, our Harbinger heroine here came out on top, as usual. And so now, we find ourselves having traveled through an ancient magical portal to the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. There's a third Telkeen here. We're going to have to stop him from stealing the Sickle of Kronos, which the uh, Order of Prometheus has hidden here because it has the power to kill even a god. We're already cut off from the gods, so the last thing that we need is these titans going through and cutting a bunch of them down if they're ever going to help us. Phew. We've got fish guys, we've got nasty spiders. This is going to be a fun ride, folks. Oh, and here we go, our first plant monsters. Check this out. Ah, and our very first one dropped some viney growth. Excellent. Ooh, jungle creeps. Those are nasty. They strike me as uh, probably some kind of palette swap that's built on, like, the um, the same thing as those the tomb rot and the magical ooze and stuff that I complain about being difficult to kill. Ooh those were not difficult to kill. Distort reality is still coming in handy. And you can see they are eating through our health, though. Um, those are not the Ichthians, of course. Those are not even the plant monsters. Those are mostly those nasty little spiders. Because they inflict damage over time. Which is never a great thing. It's a very potent poison. And since we recently traded out our um, helmet that was giving us a big bonus to health regeneration for this emerald crown, thankfully that is going to be a big help here because it's giving us an enormous amount of poison resistance. On the other hand, we're still losing health pretty quickly, enough that our uh, trance of convalescence down here can barely keep up, so maybe it's time to put a few more ranks in that as soon as we next level up, which is going to be pretty close pretty soon. We are getting there. We've got to hurry, hurry, hurry. I like these little mantis dudes. I mean, obviously I don't like them trying to kill me. But I appreciate their design. Alright, we got a battle marker. Use it to clear these guys out and then head on this way. This is such a beautiful level. It is probably, like, way more accurate to the artist's interpretations and the le uh, legends than it is to the reality of whatever the Hanging Gardens were, but that doesn't stop them from being pretty. Come on. Let's dance, kids. Ooh. I'm kind of saving distort reality for the spiders because they gang up on you and you know all of those dots add up really quickly as you can see see my health just dropping like a stone and that's not good so try to circle them up let them surround us and then boom it's these tropical spiders that you really have to worry about, the kind of the ones with the thin abdomens. The uh, bigger, more bulbous ones, the tropical widows, are actually not nearly as as dangerous, I don't think. Uh, the mantids can drop rigid carapace, which is great. 
because we still need more of that. Now this is a part of the game where like we're kind of told or made to feel that we're in a rush and there is a sense of urgency that I think the game does a, a good job of maintaining uh, but we're not actually on a real time limit. You know, this is uh, absolutely the kind of game where the Telkin will wait on us until we get there. So we can stop and check all of the treasure chests, loot all of the corpses appropriately. Nice. Yes, regenerate my health. Goodness, there we go. My right click didn't want to fire off. Ooh, an Ichthian Igus. Cool, another one of those greenish yellow items. I like finding those just because, like, yeah, they may not be as good as a green item, um, but they are. The monster gear is unique. It's just kind of neat to see the design, see how it looks on your character. Get out of our way. Another rebirth shrine. Or fountain. Go. We're getting there. Climbing the levels. Soon we'll be at the top. Mama said. Come on. There we go. Excellent. Ugh. Oh, these things are nasty. I don't know if you see... You can't really see them from that angle. I'll have to try and turn the next one because... Oh, they have these gross, like, sucker mouths. Oh, they're horrifying and terrible. Of course you want to see them. You know. Anything? No. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping for some more viney growths. But this is like the first part in the game where plant enemies really start to appear. So it's not really surprising that viney growths are going to be hard to come by right away. Not everything is dropping them. Boom. A mahogany chest. One step up from a basket, apparently. If you can believe it. Alright. Up the stairs. I can't remember if we did this in a previous video or not, but if you fight the Ichthians at night, those blue spots on them actually glow, which I think is a neat touch. They're bioluminescent like deep sea fish, which is appropriate considering their design. paths are kind of diverging. I think both of those go up to the top, though. Both the one we just passed and this one here, I believe, go to the same place. We will explore and find out. It's a good thing Distort Reality just one-shots those nasty little thin spiders. Uh, those are exactly the type of spider I don't care for. Most other types? Fine. Ah, uh, here we go. The Temple of Marduk. And go your heart. And go your head. Feel it now. Babylon. Probably not what the song meant. I'm actually kind of surprised that they chose Fishmen uh, to be one of the enemies in this area. Just a little bit. Because, I mean, yes, there is running water here. Um, but 
you know, spiders, plants, of course, insects make sense. But I don't know, for some reason, fishmen just feel not supremely out of place. Just a little bit of an odd choice. Just just a bit. Ooh, speaking of those horrible oozes, yes. Creeping slime, ugh. Oh, they're so gross. The worst is when they kind of open their quote-unquote mouth and like a tentacle from inside there comes lashing out. Ugh. Like that. Yes, exactly like that. Blech. No thanks. No thank you. That one was just lashing empty air thanks to our nightmare's confusion ability. I almost feel like these are not actually as hard to kill as the ones that we fought earlier in Egypt, the greenish ones. That could be perception, you know, it could just be because we are more powerful now. So even though they're technically higher level enemies, they genuinely aren't as hard to kill. War Mallet of Flame. That sounds intimidating. I keep holding out hope that we'll find some good equipment here, but... We're already wearing pretty good equipment, so... That's nice. The design here, of course there are more plants, and it's in higher definition, but it reminds me of the uh, the sub-levels under the palace in Act 2 of Diablo 2, like uh, the harem, because you have these uh, grates or kind of like fence areas here that encompass rooms or define rooms that you can see but can't really get to. Alright. Level 2. Ooh, the return of the rat men. Gross. At least they drop health potions. As long as they do that, that's fine. Honestly, the most irritating thing about them is the way that they run from you. But that's okay, because we have this! Nasty trap. No, thank you. No. No, that's... Oh, it's bad. There we go. Ice traps slow you down, so we definitely don't want any part of that. There we go. Okay, I think we need to go that way, which means... Of course, I'm going to head this direction first. Try to find where it loops around and goes back to the entrance. We don't want to miss anything and then find out later that... Well, I was going to say that it might be a blue item, but of course if we miss something, then we won't find out later what it would have been, will we? Unfortunate. It looks like it doesn't connect. I thought that it wrapped around, but I guess not. That's okay, I'll just run back. This is a dead end anyway, so I'll have to go back at least partway regardless. When they shrink like that and kind of contract in on themselves, I used to think that that was actually some sort of, um, like a defense stance. As in, you know, they actually were, um, doing something active to protect themselves. Like maybe hardening a shell, uh, to temporarily increase their defense or that kind of thing. But I have come to 
understand that that is actually just the way that they react to being stunned. Um, and you can tell that because they only do it when we hit them with distort reality. Or something like Warhorn, see? Because everybody kind of goes limp and just, you know, slightly ragdolls. And so that is the slime's version of that, because they don't have any limbs where they can just droop. Okay, well, we didn't miss much, but I feel better having cleared those rooms out and knowing that. Otherwise, I'd be lying awake at 3 in the morning, just staring at the ceiling. Did they have a set item? Did they have an artifact I could have looted? We'll never know. Why do you do this to yourself? Why do you do this to your followers? That poison, though. I'm really glad that we picked up that emerald crown, because that does not always spawn there. You know, being a blue item, of course, it's randomly rolled just like any other kind of treasure, mostly. And uh, I am super happy that it spawned where it did, because this is where the game really ramps up the use of poison. And you start finding, like, very quickly a large number of enemies... Um, that are using poison damage comparative to what you have encountered before in the game. Of course, there are the Minads, or Mayonads, um, and they definitely had the Rogue Mastery and used poison damage, as we saw. But it's like they're not deeply invested in it. Like, yes, it's there, but it's only one of their tricks. Maybe these demons will drop some demon blood little fire sprites. They're kind of cute. But yeah, the main ads are just kind of... I don't know, I guess... You know, you're talking one or two ranks in that skill sort of thing is the best way to describe it versus here. Uh, they really invested in poison damage. So, if you haven't been building poison resistance and you don't have that in your, um, in your equipment or in your abilities then this is where you pay for it. I'm stuck on something. Uh-oh. Well... Game. Are we having an issue? My right click is working. Hmm. Why are you not moving? Oh no. Oh no. Don't do this. Let's see if sometimes opening a menu helps. clicking on something with which you can interact, but there are no enemies. There's only our nightmare. There we go. Attack is working. I don't know. She just seems to have lost movement. Hmm. This has never happened before, and I don't know why it's happening now. Let's see. Ooh. Hmm, even that didn't work. Well, that is very unfortunate. 
Okay, well then. I don't know what else to do except quit out and load it back up. Let's see if this helps. This only reset us back to the most recent rebirth fountain, of course, which is not that bad. There we go. Okay, well. Hmm. Well. Games come with glitches. That's how that works. deal with them and we move on. Hmm. In a way, I'm not even upset, honestly, because... Well, I mean, first of all, um, I can't really be upset. I'm, I'm playing this, you know, this game that is over a decade old on a brand new system. And uh, it wasn't really meant to run on a processor or a graphics card that's powerful. It wasn't meant to uh, interact specifically with you know this operating system so I kind of have to be glad it's running as well as it is um, now of course this is also like the updated version uh, you know they keep putting patches out for this game and they uh, they keep it alive they want it to work on these newer systems and they've done a pretty admirable job the devs who have it now but it's not just that that's important too, of course, because it gives me an opportunity to talk about how, you know, that's what I love about these old games is people still play them. Not just me, but lots of folks. But it's actually kind of interesting to me from a programming standpoint to see um, new glitches. All right. And new levels as well. But to see new glitches after all this time, I've played this game for so long, and I've played it on multiple operating systems, I have played it on multiple platforms, and across different computers and machines. Um, so, you kind of get a feeling for the game. It seems like you know what it's going to do. You have expectations that are built up from your experiences with a program of any type, and you sort of intuit how it's going to perform on a Windows 10 PC with, a, you know, a 1070 Ti or um, an AMD, you know, with a, a Ryzen, ooh, blue item, nice, that kind of thing. Um, and so then when you find out that it can still surprise you, when you have enough knowledge of your system, enough knowledge of electronics and of computers specifically, uh, to have those expectations and then they can still kind of be thrown for a loop all of this time later. That's interesting in and of itself in a, in a way. Alright, let's go ahead and spend our points first. And I think I was just talking about... Okay, well, we've got to do this before we do anything else. So here's our new trance, Trance of Wrath. And it goes back to costing energy, but it just deals damage... Um, around us like in a pulse which is great okay but this is what we're really interested in temporal rift makes distort reality even more powerful by adding a dot which is electrical burn that's that damage type we've talked about that uh, not really many things have a whole lot of resistance to uh, also it causes energy drain and about half of that deals damage petrifies everybody and deals bonus damage to demons. That's all really great. Oh, it's so good. And it only gets better as you level it up. Um, we're going to stick with Trance of Convalescence, and I might even put another rank in it, maybe. Mastermind? Huh. You know, I just don't know about Mastermind. Y'all will have to let me know how you feel, because um, it adds damage and then health and energy regeneration to pets. The thing is, we only have the one pet, so I'm not sure if it's worth investing, like, eventually eight points into that. I just don't know for sure. 
Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to put another point of trance of convalescence because temporal rift is going to add a lot of punch to distort reality. So we don't need another point there, not right now. And now let's check out Harmony. Where did a Harmony go? Here we go. Ooh, okay, those are bracelets. 48 armor. That's a little bit less than what we've got now because ours has plus 17. We'd be trading 12 strength for 20 intelligence, which I don't mind. 20% energy regeneration. Ooh, plus one to all skills in nature and storm mastery. So, kind of as labeled, that is really good for a druid. Because that's the name of the build when you combine nature and storm. Overall, though, uh, I like that 20 intelligence. But I think that we're getting more out of what we have on. Just because we don't have either of those masteries. Definitely worth it for that kind of character, though. For sure. We'll stick with what we have on now, though. Get along, little vermin. Get out of our way. Ah, there's that petrified. Did you see everyone just kind of freeze in place? Now, it only lasts for a second, but... That still is... That's a second where they're not fighting you, right? And since Distort Reality now inflicts both Stun and Petrify, that's really great because it means that enemies who are immune or highly resistant to one can still be affected by the other. So a lot of these bosses that we have come across and uh, hero monsters and stuff, which are very resistant to Stun or just it doesn't work on them, that has been a problem. Ooh, Jin. I want that ring. Go away. There we go. Um, so now, enemies that uh, maybe our stuns don't work on, things like Warhorn and stuff, it won't make as much of a difference because they might still be vulnerable to petrification. I hope so, anyway. Not everything will be, and a lot of bosses, of course, still are going to have um, some resistance to that. that's all right the important thing is honestly not really how it performs against a boss but in my mind uh, how it performs against the mooks because that's what you have to deal with most of the time 99% of the game is spent fighting trash pulls oh I can't get around that way haha -ha. this way there we go. If you've played Diablo 2, you see what I mean. Alright, level 3 of the temple. There's a new rebirth fountain, so now we won't have to go nearly as far if the worst happens and I must back out like that again. We'll hope that it doesn't, though. Yeah, I'm already definitely feeling a difference from both distort reality and that improvement to trans convalescence. So that's great. That's really good. Slated clasp. Ooh, which way should we go? Oop. Towards the spiders, apparently. Which is, uh, like, I never want that to be the way we need to go. Toward the spiders. Can you please not? Okay, I think this is going to be our dead end over here. This place is a bit of a maze, so it's it's kind of like the labyrinth where I'm not a speedrunner. Uh, you know, I haven't memorized every little nook and cranny, even though I've been here before. So I have a general sense of, oh, this is the way I should kind of be going. But the game gives you that anyway because of, like, you know, the indicators for level openings, cave transitions, and so forth. I'm not special. Ugh. Oh, these things are so gross. Living trash piles. Blah.
There you go. You can see the difference between stun and petrify, where stun just kind of causes them to go limp, as we were discussing, whereas petrify freezes them in whatever their current position is. And that can be really funny sometimes, particularly when you have, say, an enemy with a leaping attack. You catch them midair and just freeze them. Oh, well, these guys don't have a chance because we have so much bonus damage against demons right now. To our normal attack as well, not just with distort reality, which is great. Let's get rid of this trap here. It's actually going to hurt us worse than the demons right now. things are almost adorable racing around leaving the little you know flaming trails let's see this place isn't like so convoluted it makes me want to cry but I do have to keep checking the map just to make sure I'm, I know I'm not doubling back on myself but I don't want to miss any rooms, and there's a lot of these rooms that just don't feed into one another, as you can see. They don't connect back thanks to these little fence things in between these gratings. And that can mean a lot of, you know, walking back the way you came. It is what it is, unfortunately. We don't have a teleport, so... Some people might find it annoying, um, but of course I'm still using potions, even though we have a really powerful healing aura turned on that just kind of passively um, causes our HP to shoot back up all the time. Some folks might think that that ability is not strong enough, that it's not doing enough for the amount of points that you put into it, but I kind of appreciate that the healing abilities, especially the regen ones, are balanced in such a way that... Um, potions never stop being useful. I mean, they're part of the game, right? Okay, this direction. There's our ticket down. So now I'm going to go this way. We're going to follow where it wraps back. There we are. See, we didn't miss too much, but you can see how it doesn't come around and connect with where we need to be in order to progress so that means doubling back thankfully in this case it only means doubling back like two or three rooms ah. you stop that yeah if y'all are gonna, like, hassle me like this, the least you can do is drop some spectral matter. Right? I mean, for real. Okay. That's that. We'll just trot right back the way that we came, and we will go on. Even the inside part of this that kind of looks like a dungeon is still pretty. You can see the plant growth has gone at this point, but I just like the architecture. I like the inclusion of water. Hmm. You can see the effects of the electrical burn dot that's been added to distort reality now because of how it... Um, It'll freeze some of these ghosts, and they won't die immediately, and then a second later, it will finish them off. And that's great, because you all have seen me run around and have to kite enemies, especially powerful bosses like the Minotaur. And so, uh... It's nice... Oop! Oh, and here we go, a chimera. Speaking of which... Now we have to do that a lot less because we have a dot to put on them with the attack that we would be using anyway. 
Gotta get rid of these frost traps. There we go. Okay. Come on. Let me not stand directly in front of its fire. I gotta aim that breath attack away from my battle standard, too, because I have to remember it has hit points. Oof. The electrical attack is the nasty one. It's hard to dodge. There we go. You might not have been expecting a chimera down here, but you got one. Oh, let's bring back our nightmare. Ooh, Persian Greaves. I like that. Signet ring, pendant, ring, ring. There we go. Okay, these Persian Greaves, let's see what they're going to do for us. 72 armor, my goodness gracious. 20% pierce resistance, 145 health, 44 energy, 13% movement speed, and plus one to marksmanship, which is a hunting mastery ability. That is way better armor than the Greaves that we have on. But overall, hmm. Are the abilities better? I'm hesitant because it's obviously keyed to the Hunting Mastery, which we don't have, but the rest of those abilities... Oh, man, I once again, I hate to lose that health regen. I really do. Hmm. No. I think at this point, we need to rely more on Trance of Convalescence. I think that even though these are really good leg armor. We just need the armor because that's almost double. Not to mention the health and energy bonuses and the movement speed. And if we have enough armor, uh, then it's going to matter a lot less. There we go. Check that out. The secret door. It's so cool. Um, but then it's going to matter a lot less. Ooh. That uh, we're regenerating health and how. Oh, the Titan corruption is so bad here. Oh, hey, it's our old friend Feyon. I have failed. All my life I trained so that I might one day kill a monster like this Telkin. But when the time came, I was not strong enough to defeat him. I fell on the first blow, powerless to move. Now, because of my failure, he is the sickle of Kronos. Can what you say be true? You managed to beat the Telkins in Crete and in Egypt. Thank you, warrior. At least in some way, my family and village have been avenged. At last, they can rest in peace. I see now I misjudged you and your abilities when we first met. Now, the Telkin wields the sickle. His power matches that of the gods. There is no telling what terrible purpose he has planned. Hurry! He used the sickle to slash an exit through the wall. Don't worry about me. Follow him. Go. Ooh. Essence of the Jade Emperor's Serenity. Ooh, look at this. So we have our first Asian um, relic shard. Well, for the road ahead, but before you, I have goods to sell to the wise. <laughs> well, we will try to play this as wisely as we can. There we go, Jade Emperor's Serenity. That enchants armor and grants lightning resistance, which we may well need. Hmm. Huh. My goodness, that's actually not bad at all. That might be better than what we're wearing, folks. Look at that. So that's a total of 67 armor. Oh, chance of bleeding damage retaliation, increased bleeding damage, 22 dexterity plus 20% health regeneration. We'll think about it. Oh, also notice, another milestone. We got another backpack, which is awesome. Here. Take these other rings and amulets that we don't need. Thank you very much. Anything here? Yeah. We'll sell this stuff too. Stately diadem. Hmm. 
Scaling strength, intelligence, and dexterity? Nice. But not as good as what we have. Also quite good. Not as good as what we have. That we might keep. <laughs> Ooh. Chakrams. Nice. Go save me. Now we could be like Xena. Why did that sound really creepy when you said it, my guy? Let's see. 9% strength, 5% health. Hmm. That might actually be a slight upgrade to one of our rings, but so slight that it's not nearly worth that price. Okay. Let's see. Make sure that we're not missing anything here. I don't believe that there's anything else around this way. Aha, but there is a quest here. I did see this demon speed on. A horde of monsters and their leader killed a terrible weapon. They came this way, slashing and burning everything in their path. Anyone who didn't flee was cut down. Oof. We better stop him in a hurry. Ooh, a hero monster. Nice. Right out of the gate. Oh, let's put a little... There we go. Excellent. Yeah, the equipment that we have is still working quite well. Boom, boom. Oh gosh. They're out here fighting each other. Pick up these green items. Uh, we'll go this way. There's a shrine. We'll grab that bonus. Ooh, yes, good. My favorite. Goodbye. Nothing. And let's see what's over here. More of you. Goodbye again. Oh my goodness, that's so satisfying, isn't it? When you just get surrounded by a horde of monsters and just... All of them go down at once. Boom. Boom. So good. Ooh, one of those Lords of the Deep. Those are nasty. Those are the ones that shoot that, um, the blue water spout attack. Okay, that is it. Now we have to go this way. Running. Ooh, Neanderthals. So yeah, this is where now we have to fight cavemen. That's our new enemy type. They've got their shamans, of course, as well. That are going to uh, mostly have the storm uh, mastery, I believe. I think they also have nature for healing. Saber lions. Oof. Get out of here, my guy. We don't have to fight. We could be friends. But no. Ooh, man. Another battle marker right as they surrounded us. They didn't have a chance. <laughs> there you go. See, now you can see that horrible, like, bleh, sort of belly mouth thing. Money? Cash? Yes, there we go. Floor cash. Ugh. Tricky, look at this. They've got the high ground shooting down at us. Rude, honestly. 
How dare you use effective tactics to combat us? Boom. Well, never again, right? You know what's interesting is... As many times as I have played this game, I don't think I've ever seen a hero monster that has spawned from, like, one of these plants or something. It, there are some categories of monster, I think, that can't be heroes. It's just not programmed into the game. And yeah, there's that nature healing spell, so... Ooh, and Titan Corruption. But, for example, you're probably never going to see a hero spider. You're not going to see a, uh, you know, a hero um, saber lion. Neanderthals? Yes. But, like, the, uh, the viney creeper things? No. Man, another battle marker. The game is really showing us some love today. Ooh. The return of the arachnos. Tropical arachnos this time. They go down just as quickly, though. Hey, hey. Mm. They're dropping reasonably good treasure. I'm not upset. Oof. Oof. There we go. If we don't have distort reality, we can still stun them. Because we don't want them biting us. That is for sure. Please, please don't bite me. Chitinous mantids. Wouldn't they all be? I mean, be fair. I feel like that's part of the point. Although, if nothing else, that definitely justifies them dropping rigid carapaces. Neanderthals all over the place. But that's alright. We are not worried about it. It's one random spider back there. Hm. Okay, that's that's fine. I can see enemies this way. We'll go here first. Man, that electrical burn is so good. It's so good. Uh, can we? Yes, we can. Okay. Wasn't 100% sure if I could get up that way. The saber riders. That's like, first of all, riding a saber tooth tiger is pretty badass anyway. But. Just the name Saber Rider sounds so cool. <laughs> like, if I had known that was a career path when I was a little kid. What would you like to be when you grow up, Starfish? I want to be a Saber Rider. Who told you about that? guys out of our way. Oh, a couple of them ran. Drat. I was trying to get them all in one shot. One of the nice things about this build that y'all have chosen is that uh, skills like Distort Reality make it so much easier and faster to run through big open areas like this. Because since enemies do tend to group up for the most part, and of course you've seen that uh, there are plenty of different types where They'll mix it up in areas, and they'll have some that will, you know, run away from melee. 
They'll have some that will crowd you, but overall they tend to group up, broadly speaking. And then that means that things like distort reality um, really just allow us to chew through and clear out all of the trash pulls in these wilderness areas very quickly so that I can keep us on the path and keep moving the game along. Huh. The Silk Road. So let's see what this guy has to say. A thing came this way holding a giant sickle and following it, strange beasts like a swarm of insects. They came like rolling death and then moved on. I wonder what terrible purpose they went east for. Hmm. That's a good question, honestly, because we know... Ooh, look at these yetis. Big old shambling. I love that they gave them the Bigfoot shamble. Also, this uh, ooh, yeti fur. Nice. That music right there. Yeah, I love that. Kind of like a uh, a reprise of the main Titan Quest theme with a little twist to it with new instruments to signal where you are in the game, you know. Good stuff. Video game music in general is so underrated um, by, I think, like, the in mainstream media. Uh, definitely in recent years, people outside of the... Um, outside of gamer culture and outside of video games as an audience have absolutely come to appreciate video game music more and to take it more seriously but I think that a lot of composers uh, really don't get enough credit you know like everyone knows Hans Zimmer every everyone knows Danny Elfman and I've used the term everyone loosely, but you know what I mean. Those are famous composers because of their work in movies and television and so forth. And their work with other famous people, such as Tim Burton and whoever. Uh, but, you know, it makes you wonder, like, who is the Hans Zimmer of video game music? That one guy who, he's he's worked on everything. And you can always kind of tell that he was involved like, who's that guy? The average person's not going to know. I don't know. I would actually be interested in an answer to that question, and if there is such a person. But regardless of whether the answer is yes or no, and regardless of whom that may be, I think that it's true that um, just video game music as a genre is generally outstanding and deserves more recognition, and the composer on Titan Quest um, really nailed it. Really nailed it. Whew, these yetis hit hard when they crowd you. Oops, see? Almost bit off more than we could chew. We got through it, though. That is so funny. Just <laughs> their little naked baboon butt cheeks sticking up. Combined with the uh, the Bigfoot shamble. Like the, the, you know, blurry cryptid footage kind of lumbering walk. That's so funny. And you know that that was done deliberately. Oh, hey, here's something we haven't seen before. Check it out. Snow. We've been all through Greece. We didn't see any snow there. And then we went through Egypt, and I mean, it definitely wasn't snowing in Egypt. It rarely does. Over the hill with you. Let our nightmare take care of the saber lion. I think he's got it. Nope. Oh. Oh, okay. Confused him and sent him over here. Well, that confused me. Come back here. There we go. 
Excellent. We're making great progress. And I want to say, too, you know, I, I try to say all the time, and I really do mean it, that playing this game with y'all is a very different experience for me. Because I've played it many times, I've played it in many ways, but I've never played it with or for an audience. And that is just something else, something very unique. And I appreciate the fact that um, it makes certain parts of the game, you know really improves them uh, makes them go a lot faster like this part of act three um, I feel like is a bit of a slog not it's it's really no worse than some of the open wilderness areas uh, in in Greece and Egypt but for example there just aren't a lot of diversions around here you know this is you can see how far we've come there have been no side caves, none of those little random tombs to step off into. Um, there are no side quests. There are no NPCs, no uh, no merchants with damaged wagons saying, "Ah, oh, you know, go kill that monster over in that cave because he turned my wagon over. He stole my cow. There just really isn't any of that in this particular section of the game. And because of that, I think that kind of makes it feel um, a little bit more like a slog. Maybe unfairly so, because it's, it's really not that bad in terms of the size. But the, the pacing is a little weaker here than in other parts of the game, in my opinion. And so doing it with y'all really takes a lot of the sting out of that. Um, I feel like I have already come a lot further than like than the speed that this part normally goes at, which is great. These little imps, man. Pangs. And I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly because, uh, you know, none of the languages of China are my native one. Peng. Anyway, they drop their claws, which is great. We haven't really looked at this. You, you all should see, see the viney growths. There we go. They enhance armor with health regeneration, which is great. You know I love that, right? Yeti fur enhances armor with cold resistance and improves your cold damage, which is also good. Put that over there. We can get to it. Um... And there we go. Peng Claw just enhances weapons with straight up damage bonus. Which is pretty great. Hmm. Is this better than what we're wearing? Once again, I think I have to say no. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say no. It's pretty good, though. It's good, but not good enough to trade out. The little things, um, they make me think of uh, ice methods from Dungeons and Dragons. Little snow imps. Boom. Have a dot. Get dotted on. Okay, right over there is where we're supposed to go, so of course we will go this way. And saber claw. Oh, I forgot that they dropped their stuff too. Yep. So, a saber claw enhances weapons with bleeding damage and improves your offensive ability, which is great. So all of these different beast charms that we're encountering, these new ones, are all pretty good, pretty solid stuff. If there's one thing snow levels are good for, it's that even in the dark, you can find your way around pretty easily. Ooh, ooh, there we go, an experience shrine. Oh, yes, come to us. Come. Excellent. Yes, good. 
That's what we like. You can see a portal up ahead, but I'm going to run this experience shrine down as much as I'm able to. We'll get the most out of it that we can. We'd be fools not to. Come on. Hey, get back here. Oh my gosh, there we go. If they just ran, it would be less irritating, but it's like they'll wait for you to catch up to them, and then they do that little hopping run away from you, like right as you get to them. Okay, well our experience point shrine is done with, but still, that was a nice little chunk. Pendant of Servitude. Pick up all this stuff. There we go. I don't think that we missed anything super great. I don't even think that we missed any cash. But we'll double check. And then we'll head into the settlement and grab that portal. Anything at all? Anything at all? No. Okay. Alright, let's head inside then. To the village. Shangsheng. Alright, and they actually have a caravan. One man yesterday. Well, pay of Neanderthal boots. Let's see. I'm still thinking this might be better than what we have. Maybe. You can see I'm just collecting stuff wildly. Stuff that I probably should not really be hanging on to. <laughs> but uh, this is that kind of game, right? they're going to provide me with a space where I can hoard stuff, I'm going to do it. Why not? There we go. Those are all pretty good. The rest of this, I think that will sell. And then this might be time to say goodbye to this armor here. I think so, actually. Because mm, that's already got health regeneration. Yes. So we can try that out. We will uh, we'll go and recover our essence of Amun Ra's glory. But first... Let's see. Sets Betrayal... That. Okay, this one's going to go here. The Jet of Osiris. Bonus damage to the undead. I guess of Athena. Ooh, do we have a completed one of those? Love it. Awesome. There we go. Look at that. You love to see it. Oops. The Ankh of Isis. Plus 95 health. Very nice. Another Amun Ra's Glory, which is awesome. This one is plus 15 armor. That one is plus 90 energy. Hmm. 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 You know, we're doing okay on energy. That was a great bonus when we first put it in our armor. Uh, because it basically made up for the reservation cost of Trance of Convalescence. But now, I'm thinking I'd rather have the 15 armor, to be honest. Okay, let's see here. Spectral Matter. I'm glad to see that building out that way. Rigid Carapace. Is that all we have? Yes, because we used the one that we had, didn't we? Okay. Um, mechanical Parts. Hey. We can complete that one. Vile Icker. Uh, let's see, a lupine claw. Excellent. You'll love to see it. Wonderful. Okay, viney growth. Now, 
we will just drop these right over here. Ooh, Yeti fur. Can't forget that. Okay, we'll sell this stuff and then they actually have all the people here that we need. Never have I seen so many monsters. But what can I do for you? All right. Excellent. Good. I don't think this guy's got anything that we want. Let's head over to the Enchanter. And here we go. Instead of the Altar of Creation, we're going to click on the Altar of Separation. We're going to take our armor off and put it over here. And then you'll see here, there's the cost. Recover item or recover relic or charm. So whichever one we pick, it's going to destroy the other one. Well, we definitely want our Amun Ra's glory back. So, it gives you a dummy button. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, we're very certain. Goodbye. And then we'll head back over here to the caravan. Oh, and here we go. Excellent. Oop. No, 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 no. Yes, we wish to enhance this item, and there we go. Cool. That even looks kind of neat on her, doesn't it? I'm a fan, anyway. Alright, well, let's check this out. So, there's our mystic if we wanted to respec, which we don't right now. I think we're pretty solid where we're at. We'll grab the portal. Definitely got to make sure to do that. And we've got several, several people who want to talk to us about quests. Let's talk to this person first. Have you seen a Yeti? I went once to the Chumbi Valley into the ice caverns. I saw a Yeti there larger than any other. Maybe this is what the old tales mean when they talk of a giant beneath a mountain in the east. Hmm. Possibly. We'll find out for sure. Certain. In past times, we would rarely see a Neanderthal. Suddenly, the tribes near us have grown bold. Bold and powerful. For two days now, they have attacked us incessantly. If only my son were here. I have not seen him. And these are dangerous times. Mystery in the mountains. Hmm. Okay, well, I think that that is pretty much all for Shangsheng Village. So we're going to go ahead out the other side and continue. Let's grab this. And, yep, okay, across the chasm, across the valley to the Natu La Pass. Boom. So the Neanderthals are treated as beast men. That's their monster category. So they are basically the uh, the satyrs, or the centaurs, or the jackal men of Act Three, especially here at the beginning. I think you fight fewer of them as you come down out of the mountains. Not to spoil anything. They're most populous up here, but... There we go now, there's a cave marker. This way. I like this area a lot. Of course, I have told you all before, if you uh, watched my playthrough of Icewind Dale, especially, um, I've mentioned that I am a sucker for snow and ice levels. But also, I just think that they really did dynamite work with the, uh, the environments of Titan Quest. Ooh, another experience shrine. Yes, good. But they, they just did great work, and, um, this is some of the, my favorite that they did in the game. I love this snowy mountain terrain. Come 
come back here. We need to go into that cave, of course, before we go on, but I am just trying to... Is there another rebirth fountain up here? I think there is. Yes. There we go. Okay, we're going to go back. Uh, there went our experience trying. That wasn't nearly as well placed as that other one was. I wanted to try and use it up. Maybe I should have gone into the cave. Ah, look at this hero monster. Adara the Lovely, Jin Hero. Oof. Ooh, and now we're fighting rhyme sprites and ice sprites. The little crystalline cold versions of the fire demons that we fought back in the Hanging Gardens. And honestly, they're just twice as adorable. Wish I could get one as a little minion to follow me around, you know? If you could summon one. I don't think we need anything there. All right, down into the ice caves. This is where we need to be watching out for the gargantuan yeti, right? Oh my gosh. Not one, but two more hero monsters. Do you see that? That rarely happens. Right next to each other. That is so rare. My goodness gracious three that close together is rare anyway but two like literally spawning on top of each other oh they got our nightmare I like the tense piano in a minor key there in the background once again the composer really nailed it here it's very simple but it feels like, oh no, I am in a spooky ice cave. Yeah, this is not the one where the giant yeti is, but we found three hero monsters, so I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Alright, back this way. Around the edge. Oh, look at that snowy chasm. I can't wait to knock some monsters off into that. Whew. Go. I think that makes a full pang claw already. Although they're not a supremely uncommon drop. Pangs tend to drop their claws like fairly consistently. Jin count as uh, demons as well, so I'm gonna keep hoping that they'll drop either spectral matter or demon's blood. I always try to take them out for preference uh, before you go after like the ice sprites and things because they'll put those blizzards down where they've got the storm mastery. Oh, and here we go. Quest monsters. There, stop running. Is that all of them? Yes, okay. Here we go. Well, I thought I was done for. Thank you, friend. Let's see. How can I repay you? Yeah, well, that'll do. That's another one of those, like, insta-side quests where basically the moment you stumble upon it, you've already solved the problem. Bonus to intelligence and energy? Not bad. Not as good as what we're wearing, but very good. This also guides you over here towards this cave. See, they drop that 
that blizzard and it just it's basically it's area denial because you can't just stand in it I mean you can but you'll be sorry One of the few, well, I won't say few because I'm not sure. Um, it, there could be a lot more, but uh, it's one of the known linguistic mistakes, I suppose, in Titan Quest, is um, that I'm pretty sure that Jin is the plural and that Jinny is actually the singular. And so those, uh, when we fight them, they should be called a Jinny. Of course, my Arabic was never great. I was never fluent. Let's be honest, I was barely conversational. It's sad how if you don't use any kind of skill, or especially a language over the years, it just sort of fades. Ugh. Neanderthals, I am rapidly losing any shred of sympathy for y'all. Like, here I was prepared to talk about how I'm, I'm not sure how great it is that, you know, they're classified as beast men and so forth, but the more they stab me, the less I kind of want to defend them. I know this is a lot of blinding white, but it's still pretty to me. Whew. Well, I barely got to target anything after that. That dot took them all out. Which is great, that's what it's supposed to do. We're gonna start coming out of the snow pretty soon here, though. For those of you who are having to look away from the screen because of the bloom reflecting off of the icy rock. There you go, see? You can see freedom below. <laughs> Out of our way. I need to get back down into warmer climates. I'm wearing sandals. Our heroine's flip flops necessitate that we must return below the snow line. Boom. We are moving along at an excellent clip. Ooh, hey, an experience shrine. Ooh, pick it up, pick it up. And, haha, <laughs> uh, dinosaurs. I wanted to save this as a surprise for y'all because it is very silly and I love it. Unironically, one of my favorite things. Oh my gosh, come on, give me something to kill. Uh. Uh. Oh, look at this. What a waste of an experience point shrine. Okay, well. Oh, very good. Come, stranger. We have some good things for you today. Hmm. That's actually not a bad helmet, but it's not one that we need. Same for this, I think. Uh, I feel so bad about that. Let's see, I think, since we're here, we ought to dress the part, don't you think? 
Here we go. Boom. There. Now, I don't feel so silly running around in the snow. I didn't used to have that. You could color your tunic in different ways, but um, that was it. You couldn't actually change outfits. Now they have Egyptian and uh, Asian outfits and so forth as well, which is really cool. The spirits of our ancestors have turned on us. They are attacking anyone who goes near the temple. Make things worse. Three sacred weapons are hidden in the ancestral cave. Without them, we cannot defend ourselves against these new Neanderthal attacks. So, Mystery in the Mountains. Remember, that is the Missing Sun side quest. Alright, we'll just head this way. We'll help these folks out before we go on. There's no reason why not, right? cave over there, but first I'll take these guys out. Nothing. Okay. I love this style of architecture right here with the, like, the round gateway and the wall. Ah, it's so beautiful. Oop, almost missed some floor cash. Here we go, the Ancestral Spirits. Boom. There. They won't bother you anymore. Ooh. Looks like the three sacred weapons are gone. Perhaps that's why the ancestral spirits were upset. Let's go report back to the elder here. Love that waterfall, by the way. What? The pedestals were empty? Are you sure? The sacred weapons have been stolen. What can this mean? Hmm. A good question. Not one that we can answer here. We're going to have to keep going. Oh. That's weird. See that there was an invisible enemy. The sprite hadn't spawned, but it was still present in the game. Wild. Oh, see, it's doing it again. Maybe they're just camouflaged. Clever girl. What is happening over here? Hmm. A lot of invisible enemies. That's so weird. <laughs> but, I mean, it's that's fine. It's just strange. As long as we can still target them and kill them. That's really what matters at the end of the day. Boom. Stop running away from me. Hey. Nice. All right. Let's spend these beautiful, beautiful points. Okay. Uh, strength, we definitely don't have to worry about. Dexterity, intelligence. Okay. So let's see. We're really close to maxing out Dream Mastery, which is great because then I'm going to feel like we can just start dumping points directly into Warfare. So soon we will have both of these maxed out and have access to all of our abilities. Everything will be unlockable, if not unlocked. 
and uh, then we can start spending points on that, which is going to be great. So, I'm going to keep putting at least a point or two in here. I think I'm going to put two in order to try and push it and get it there quicker. And then, let's see. This is so close to being maxed out, I feel like I should push it. Huh. On the other hand... Hmm. Been a while since we increased any of our warfare abilities, honestly. I probably should. Hmm. An additional half second of stun. That could be good. Or, let's see. Hmm. Maybe we should increase our speed or our dodge. I keep neglecting those, and it's a shame. But Dream is just so good, and we just keep putting points into it, and it keeps getting better. Uh, offensive ability, total speed, chance to avoid... Hmm. See? Just everything's really good over here. Okay, though. For real. Um... Let's put another point into weapon training. That's going to increase our attack speed and our offensive ability. There we go. Okay. Anything that increases our damage, right? Okay, this is hilarious, though. The invisible hatchlings and the way the nightmare just kind of gets stuck on them. That's so funny. That should not be happening, but, like, lol. Ooh, yes. Hello, experience points. On, give me something good. No, nothing. Okay, moving on. There we go. Ooh. Need to clear this out. There's got to be more enemies over this way, right? There have to be. Yes. Okay, good. Because we still want to make the most of this shrine while we've got the bonus. Raptor tooth. Grab this and do the same. Come on. Oh man, those experience shrines just do not last very long. Ah oh, well. K sera sera. Whatever will be, will be. Back up into the hills again. We're returning to the snow. That's why they're called ice raptors, you see. They tend to live in the snow level. There we go. You can even see, like, did you see the explosions as I uh, caught those invisible enemies with distort reality? So they're there, they're being affected. It's so strange. See, look. You can see them get struck. <laughs> Wild. Okay. Hmm. It's all my fault. Our sacred weapons. I was such a fool. Now the brute Neanderthals have them. There's no hope. Oh. Oh, honey. So this is the missing son, of course. He took the sacred weapons in order to try and help fight off the Neanderthals, and the result is that it made the ancestral spirits angry, and because he's not a warrior, he lost them. Oh, honey, well, it's fine, sweetheart. We'll, we'll get them back. I thought I would be a hero. That's what I thought. Take the weapons of our ancestors and decimate our enemies. Then the mountains would be safe. 
and peaceful. But I lost them. I angered the spirits of our ancestors and the spirit of the mountain. Hmm. Okay, well... We'll see what we can do, right? Need to put more points in Battle Rage. TBH. Come on. The saber Lions, get off me. Leave my nightmare alone. Don't you be mean to him. Let's see what we can do for this fella. Bunch of invisible ice raptor hatchlings. Well, no wonder you didn't want to come in here. I love this random ice shrine. Look at that. Here we go, you see the quest markers. Yeah. There we go. He was no challenge. Where did our nightmare go? Did he get him? He did. Here we go, another new relic. The Code of Hammurabi. Enchants rings and elements or amulets uh, with intelligence. Makes sense, right? Makes sense to me. Oh, there's another quest enemy. Tor Skull Crusher. He will never crush another skull. Gosh, how deep is this cave? The answer is this deep. Definitely want to take this trash out quickly because, well, you'll see in a moment. There we go. Clear the ledge. That's why. He is very similar to Polyphemus the Cyclops, except that he also has ice meteors which I don't appreciate. Uh, see that stun. Boom. Well, you know what? We can do that too. There. Aha! And he dropped nothing. Great. Love it. <laughs> That's okay. Boom. 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 Cash. Uh... Wow. Really wasn't a whole lot there. But... There we go. We got the weapons. We didn't actually pick them up. Normally you would, of course. Remember, like, Chiron's bow. You have to actually put it in your inventory and take it physically back to him. 
and we don't have to really do that this time but that is all right he can walk down there and pick them up himself through the horrible ice caverns we did our part We miss it. Okay. Missed an invisible ice raptor hatchling. Alright, let's go tell him about this. You you stopped them. I thought that with the weapons of our ancestors, the Neanderthals would be all powerful. I thought we were lost. Oh, this was all my fault. Well, Yes, it was, but just do better. Okay, so we know where he's at. Let's drop our portal stone here. We're going to go back and tell his dad. We'll just let him know that his boy is safe. My son, alive. Oh, happiness. When he returns to me, I will forgive him. Let there be no more anger and folly. As long as he learns something. Okay. Well, we'll reunite the happy family. And that will take care of that side quest. We still have to find a gargantuan yeti. I'm not sure if we want to, right? You'll see when we get there, that guy's so frustrating to fight. Well, he can't be. Ooh, hulking yetis. Ugh. Come on. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff in that. Get out of here. I'm trying to pick up treasure. It's rude to interrupt. Honestly. Over the mountains you came. Now into the caves of ice you go. It is the only way. And after that. Ah, but you'll see for yourself. Yeah, I suppose we will. Here we go. The Tsongmo Ice Caverns. Full of Neanderthals, of course. As ice caverns often are. As you might expect. Mm. I like that music with those crystalline tones, though. Good. Ooh, rhyme sprites. You're adorable, but you have to die. I'm sorry. It's the only way. Let's see. I think this kind of wraps around. Okay, that's where we need to go. So let's go this way. I love their, like, their evil laugh when they first spot you. The djinn sound... They, they make me think of Ursula from The Little Mermaid. And they're just like, ha 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 Okay, nothing we need there. Ah, I still got off that blizzard. Well, I keep calling it a blizzard. I think the name of the ability is actually Tempest. If I'm not mistaken. I'm always trying to preempt that, but... Oh, these guys, on the other hand, no problem. That's why you target the djinn first. Plus, these little dudes are just not a threat. 
Nor are the ice raptors, even when they're invisible. That is so random. Okay, there. I'm not hunting for you. There's still one there. Did we get it? Okay. That's what really frustrates me is like, it's hard to tell whether or not I got them all. Which of course would be a thing with invisible enemies, right? Our room clearer helps a lot with that though. I feel a lot more secure after I throw off a distort reality and see little explosions everywhere. Goodness gracious. I'm glad the Nightmare can see them because... Ah, these little imps are a pang in my ass. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yes, good. Perfect timing. A room where we're surrounded by loads of easily killable enemies who want to group up on us? Sure. Come on now, give, give me something to feed my experience, Shrine. Don't, don't tease me. Anything else over here? Yes, good. cash. It's about to wear off anyway, so that was a pretty good one, though. Those ping aren't worth a lot, but there's so many of them where they travel in groups, and it's so easy to kill them that they go down so quickly that it really adds up. Death's Wings. Oh boy. Another blue item. Yes. Love treasure. Ah, I wish Pacific Pixel could be part of this stream because uh, he loves treasure. Like, loves it. I'm glad you all are part of this stream, though, because these ice caves can be a little lonely to go through if you're by yourself. Here we go. That is a Chakram. Nice. Consume life. Activated on low health. Piercing damage. Reduction to enemies' health. Reduced damage and resistances and slowed. That is a really good throwing weapon. What level is that? Level 20. That's pretty solid. Ugh. Love it. We found so many good throwing weapons, I'm almost sorry we're not using them. Not sorry enough to switch, though, because we are kicking a lot of butt with our dual-wielding abilities, so... Ah, uh, here we go. It's this guy. He is basically immune to stun and, you know, I just need to point him away from the nightmare because he's just going to do what he does. If we get caught in his ice breath, the main thing is see it'll freeze us, which is not ideal. Uh, uh, it's it's rough to dodge it because there you go like we're melee and that makes it a little bit harder there we go excellent oh uh, <laughs> look at that <laughs> okay okay well um Hmm. Not how I expected him to uh, to wind up. That may be that may be our thumbnail, folks. Maybe. Uh 
this uh, this right here I think might be our thumbnail oh wow that's very silly <laughs> well let's see what's in the big chest because we're about done with this um, I think our stream is almost ready to come to an end Ooh. we got some ah domain of the dragon kings it adds fire resistance to armor which is great of course we don't really need that right now still being in the ice caves as we are uh, we are coming to the end of the ice caverns though there's not a whole lot left when we come out the other side of course there's going to be a portal Ooh, hey look at that snow crag alpha and here i was talking about how they didn't have hero monsters well make a liar out of me in the best way no less so whew, before we put this stream to bed I definitely want to thank you again for being here today because uh, I feel like we have really torn through this part of the game which is awesome um, because it, it is one that I feel drags just a little bit just that first part of it like this part has been pretty good we have a bunch of quests right in a row uh, but that initial part when we first come down out of the hanging gardens I feel like it's a little slow and we really flew through it tonight so I'm glad to have had your company and I'm glad that you stuck around for the entire stream I hope that uh, I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't already and if you are subscribed be sure to go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well um, I will be uploading this stream there tomorrow hopefully barring you know some great calamity I always try to do the day after so you can find it there and uh, be sure to if you use Twitter Facebook pillow fort um, find me on there and follow me because that is where I'm going to be posting updates about, you know, anything special we're doing, future streams, um, if I have to, goodness forbid, take a day off or miss a stream if I was going to be late or something like that, I try to post that on Twitter because I feel like it's the fastest way to reach people. So... Follow me there to make sure that you don't miss any of that kind of news. Ooh. Aha! Got out just in time. Now I'm going to pop a potion. I don't like where my health's sitting. You can kind of see the door down there. Like, we're, we're almost there. This loops around and then. The great thing about the gin is that distort reality does bonus damage to demons. Haha. -ha. You won't catch us. Boom. Anything good? Eh. Maybe in this one. Eh, health potion. Not mad about that. And here we go. We're free, free of the ice caverns. Not of the mountains, of course, but... Oof. Oh, man, we found so much Yeti fur. Yeti fur, I think, is the boar hide of Act 3. Like, it, it drops so much more commonly than most of the other monster charms. I'm going to take that. Nice. 
There we go. You can see the portal up ahead. So once again, I'm going to thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Always enjoy your company. And we're going to leave this stream here where it is. I'm going to have to say goodbye for now, but I hope that you will come back next Thursday for more Titan Quest at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. I hope that during this awful COVID-19 pandemic, y'all continue to take care of one another, wash your hands, stay safe, be kind, and I will see you again for the next episode. Perhaps I'll see you Monday or Saturday for other series as well at the same times. How do you see? Through the gates. Follow the blade. Beware the master. How did he get ahead of us? Well, that's a mystery for another stream. <laughs> I'll see you then. And as always, thanks for playing.